This is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV. Five things you need to know in about 10 minutes for Friday, April 19th, 2024. Our Friday Five, the five big stories of the week. Item number five this week, of course, in, well, Israel. You know by now that uh, Iran launched an unprecedented direct attack on Israel for the first time this past Saturday night into Sunday morning. 99% of the projectiles, we are told, were knocked down. A few got through, damaging an airbase in the south, a couple hitting an observation post or near an observation post on Mount Hermon, interestingly enough. Only one casualty that a seven-year-old Bedouin Arab in the Negev. The Biden administration telling the uh, the government of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, to just take the win. You shot down almost all of the 350 incoming uh, drones and missiles. That's like saying to a police officer, hey, don't arrest the guy who shot you because your bulletproof vest stopped the bullet. All it takes is one bullet to get through for some serious damage to happen. So we are, as of this recording, still waiting for Israel's promised response. It does appear, according to Reuters news agency, that the Biden administration knew about the attack and, in fact, was okay with the attack. This might explain how um, on Saturday night, Friday into Saturday, we were hearing from Washington, D.C., that an attack was expected within the next 48 hours. How could they be so specific? According to a Turkish diplomatic source cited by Reuters, they were told by Tehran that they were about to attack. And according to this source, the White House said, OK, as long as you don't uh, you know, keep it within certain limits. What those limits are, we don't know. Again, the White House has denied any advance notice here. But again, they did blame Donald Trump. If he hadn't pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal, everything would have been fine. That's bunk, and I think we all know it. The attack did prompt a sudden 180-degree U-turn among some Democrat politicians here in the United States. They were beginning to get a little squishy on support for Israel. In fact, the highest-ranking Jewish member in the United States in the, Jew in the American government, uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, had basically called for uh, regime change in Iran, or Israel, that is, saying that Benjamin Netanyahu had lost his way. But... Um, now he's back on track saying our commitment is ironclad. That seems to be the key word that was handing out, handed out among the talking points in the D Democratic caucus last weekend. Um, it is now popular to support Israel for now. We'll begin to see that fade in the days ahead, which again is why I suggested on Monday that perhaps Israel would strike sooner rather than later while they still had the majority of world opinion behind them. Topic number four, the hostages. Again, the uh, hostage negotiations are essentially a psychological warfare operation being played by Hamas. They have um, not been forthcoming in allowing the, uh, the Red Cross or Red Crescent access to the hostages to verify their health and that, uh, how they were being treated. Um, at, on Saturday night at the height of Iran's attack, Hamas rejected the most recent offer for a ceasefire presented by uh, uh, mediators in Qatar. Hamas wanted a proposal that would uh, essentially amount to an 18-week ceasefire, an 18-week ceasefire, full withdrawal of the IDF from the Gaza Strip, return for, of uh, Palestinian Arabs to the northern part of the territory, and Israel wouldn't get back any hostages until after six weeks. In exchange, there would be between 700 and 1,000 Palestinian Arab terrorists being held by Israel. Uh, again, this is not a, a, these are not demands that the Israeli government will uh, uh, consent to, but uh, there are those, uh, there are media reports citing sources inside Hamas uh, and citing Israeli officials familiar with the negotiations that Hamas at this point is not even sure they can produce 20 humanitarian hostages that are still alive. So uh, I, I think whatever is going on in the way of negotiation is simply a d stall tactic on the part of Hamas to buy time for them to uh, regroup and for uh, world opinion to once again swing against Israel as it ultimately will. Topic number three, Orwell was 40 years early. U.S. Senate was expected to reauthorize the contentious warrantless surveillance powers conferred by Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, uh, might even strengthen them with language. Uh, Oregon Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat, 
said, uh, quote, this will force a huge range of companies and individuals to spy for the government, end quote. Uh, last Friday, the House of Representatives passed the bill, which re renews Section 702 of FISA in a vote that uh, passed 273 to 147. But minutes before final passage, the chamber voted down a proposed amendment. It tied 212 to 212. I erroneously said Speaker Mike Johnson cast the deciding vote. He actually can't do that. But when there is a tie vote in the House, the bill fails. So he didn't need to uh, cast a deciding vote. Uh, the, the amendment would have required the government, the NSA, FBI, to get a warrant before collecting any data, user data, on American citizens swept up in a FISA sweep. Again, that amendment failed, and so the bill without the amendment was sent on to the Senate. Um, this uh, bill, with the strength in, with the ch change in Section 702, would now require any service provider who has access to equipment that is being or may be used to transmit or store wire or electronic communications, end quote, to hand those communications over to the federal government, which basically means that any place you are that's got an open Wi-Fi network, if you're doing anything on that network, those communications may be turned over to the federal government without a warrant and without your knowledge. Again, Orwell was just 40 years early, 1984, 2024. Missed it by that much. Topic number two. Defending the border in Ukraine. Speaking of House Speaker Mike Johnson, his job may be hanging by a thread at this point, as he uh, earlier this week agreed to put together separate bills for aid for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, and then a fourth bill for a number of other foreign policy objectives, but then combining them in a tactic that is dubbed uh, MIRV, which stands for Multiple Independently Targeted Reentry Vehicles. You know, it's a missile system. You get one delivery system with multiple explosive warheads that branch off. If you ever played the, the old game Missile Command, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, apparently the House of Representatives sometimes uses this legal tactic to jam a bunch of bills together and send them over in one package to the Senate for passage. This has angered some conservative Republicans who wanted to separate aid for Ukraine, which they oppose, from aid to Israel and Taiwan, which they support. So, uh, Representative Thomas Massey of Kentucky now says he's on board with an effort being led by Re Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia to boot Johnson out of the job as Speaker of the House. And at this point, because Representative Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin is resigning as of today, it's only going to take two Republicans to vote to remove Johnson to kick him out of the chair and send the House back into turmoil, like when uh, Kevin McCarthy was voted out. Democrats refused to send him a lifeline or give him a lifeline to kick him out. There were enough Republican votes to um, deny McCarthy the uh, votes he needed to remain in the job. Anyway, uh, after today, Green only needs one other person. And with Massey on board, Mike uh, Johnson could be out of a job here soon. Uh, Johnson said at a press conference on Tuesday that he would not resign as he was asked to do by Massey on social media called the motion to vacate. That's the, uh, the procedure by which the House of Representatives basically fires the speaker. Uh, he called the motion to vacate absurd. Get your popcorn. It's going to be an interesting ride between here and November. Coming up, um, we are living in biblical times. The, the, the sight of the missiles over the Temple Mount was apocalyptic. But I got another one that comes to us from Iran next on 5 and 10. We want to make sure that you know how you can get your copy of this incredible new book in the Summoning the Demon Super Collection. This amazing collection includes Dr. Thomas Horn's final book, Summoning the Demon, Artificial Intelligence and the Image of the Beast, that reveals how tech singularity will bring an all-powerful artificial mind to life. The trigger event that will make 666 the mark of the beast mandatory overnight. What the future of a marked society will look like. The new face of transhuman supernatural warfare and how Christians must prepare for what is coming. But this incredible collection also includes, for a limited time, the brand new Dr. Thomas Horn Definitive Skywatch TV Collection. 
This unimaginable and historical TV anthology is valued at $99.95 all by itself. It contains a total of 96 episodes, over 45 hours of content on eight DVDs, and is not available anywhere else or online. And includes classic series like Zenith 2016, The Milieu, Belly of the Beast, Saboteurs, The Wormwood Prophecy, The Messenger, Zeitgeist 2025, Legion, and more. But we're still not finished. You'll also receive Trajectory, Tracking the Approaching Tribulation Storm. This unprecedented masterpiece by legendary authors Dr. Thomas Horn, Terry James, Tim Moore, and others provides in-depth analysis of emerging topics like pandemic tidal waves, catastrophic weather changes, Mideast malevolence, and so much more. This unprecedented collection sold separately holds a retail value of over $140. Yours now for your donation of only $39.99 plus shipping and handling. So don't delay. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now using the camera app on your phone for instant access to this special collection. You can also visit us at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985 and ask for the Summoning the Demon Super Collection, now. Item number one today, you know the story about how the Nile ran red back in the time of Moses? Well, apparently this happened just last week in Iran. Actually, this week in Iran. Iran Iran's suffering from an, an extended drought. Um, they've been praying for rain there. The rainfall for the year is 28% below the long-term average. Iran's meteorological organization last month did issue a red warning for flooding in five of its western provinces. They were expecting a change in climate conditions that would result in a lot of heavy rain. And they did get that rain. But videos on social media showed something that they didn't expect. Uh, torrents of water flowing blood red. This is on the island of Hormuz. The phenomenon is not unknown in Iran. But the timing was interesting, to say the least. Again, Saturday night into Sunday morning, Iran launching its first ever attack on Israel and then rivers running red. Uh, And next Monday night, as Jews worldwide enjoy the Passover Seder, they will read about a blood red river, the Nile, book of Exodus, Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. He lifted up the staff and struck the water in the Nile and all the water in the Nile turned into blood. Now, I'm not a coincidence theorist. Maybe there's a good natural explanation for it. Could well be. But again, the timing certainly coincidental if you are a coincidence theorist. Skywatch TV's Defender Conference, a virtual conference, which means you stream the video on your schedule at home. You need to pause, you need to take a break. You can do that. Watch the presentations in the order you choose, and you get 90 days access from the moment you sign up. Two dozen presenters, plus as a free bonus, all six Skywatch Films documentaries, including the two award winners, uh, Silent Cry, The Darker Side of Trafficking, and Inhuman, the next and final phase of man is here. This also includes Ragnarok, Humanity's Last Stand, which is based on Tom Horn's jaw-dropping Wormwood prophecy. So take advantage of this. You get all of that for one one fee and, uh, again, 90 days access to watch on your schedule. Information and registration at DefenderConference.com. That's DefenderConference.com. Skywatch TV this week talking about artificial intelligence and how it may factor into end times prophecy. Summoning the Demon, the name of the book. Tom Horn completed his section of the manuscript prior to his passing last fall. Joe Artis Horn, Ali Anderson also contributing to the book. It's, uh, as I said, during the recording for the program, Joe Horn lays out the use of AI and deep fake technology as the most plausible scenario I have heard yet for giving life to the image of the beast. So don't miss these programs. You'll find them right now at our website, skywatchtv.com. You can also catch it right now at our Roku or Apple TV channels, rumble.com slash skywatchtv, or better yet, cancel-proof yourself. 
Make sure we never get canceled by downloading our free mobile app to your smartphone or tablet. This also brings exclusive content that is web only right into your mobile device. You can use Google's Chromecast or Apple's AirPlay to send the video wirelessly to your smart TV. Uh, it's got a calendar of upcoming events, a Bible with multiple translations, audio Bible that is, and uh, more. We've got apps for iOS, Android, and Amazon Kindle Fire phones and tablets. Links to those app stores are posted at our website, skywatchtv.com slash app. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. Have a blessed weekend and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Derek Gilbert. This is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV.